This is Mrs. Freilich. Today we're going to cover phonics, writing, math, and reading. So let's get started. Now it's time for your phonics lesson. The supplies that you'll need are your printout or paper, pencil, eraser, colored pencils, scissors, glue, and your digital worksheet. Our objective is I can recognize the WH sound in words. Today we're going to take a look at the WH words. Now WH sounds like W, like W, and the H is silent. Echo these words after me. Wham. Whip. Good job. Now echo these words after me. Let's start at the top of the chart. Whale. Whirlpool. Wheel. Whistle. Whisper. Wheat. Whisker. And whisk. Nice work. Now let's take a look at this video to learn more about this digraph, WH. Remember, a digraph is a combination of letters that makes one sound. Let's watch. Click on the link in your Google Classroom in today's phonics assignment. Now let's review how to draw our W's and H's. If it starts the sentence, remember, you start each sentence with a capital letter. So the W will be a capital W, like so. And it goes all the way to the top, except for the little hump in between. And then the H starts way up at the tip top, goes all the way to the bottom. And the little hump only goes to the dotted line. But if your WH word goes in the middle of a sentence, you don't need the capital letter. So you do a lowercase w, like so, and then your H next to it, like so. So remember, the lowercase only goes to the dotted line, and the H goes all the way up from the top to the bottom, but the hump only goes to the dotted line. And now for your assignment. What I'd like you to do is print out this worksheet and write your full name at the top with proper capitalization. Then trace the digraph WH five times following the dotted lines for both lines. Then write the digraph in the blanks to complete all these words. And you can color the pictures. Cut out the words at the bottom of the page and glue them under the pictures that they match. Now, if you do not have a printer, get out a piece of writing paper and write your full name at the top. Then write the digraph WH five times across your page using both the capital letters and the lowercase letters as shown here. Then complete these three words below by writing the digraph in front of the letter groups. Then write each of the words at the bottom of the page in order going from left to right. Then, when you're all finished, upload this into Google Classroom. And now let's do this digital worksheet for computer practice. What you'll do is you'll click on this red rectangle at the top and just click on that and then type your name. And then take a look at these pictures down here. The first one is a kitty cat and he has whiskers. So we come over to the yellow words and we look for the word whisker. They all start with WH, but what ends in an er sound? This one right here. So you gotta make sure that you grab it with a cross and you drag it over to the gray box. And then you do the rest with the rest of the pictures using these words right here. Then you see this big, giant, blue rectangle. You're going to make capital W's and lowercase h's. So what you do is you click on it, hold the shift key down, 
while you hit the W. <gasps> that makes a capital letter. And then you find H on the keyboard and you hit that. And then you see that big bar at the bottom of your keypad? That's a space bar. Hit that once and then do it again. Shift key down, hit the W and then the H and do as many as you can to fill the row. Now down here, what you're going to do is click on the large blue rectangle and then do lowercase w and an h. But notice what happens when I hit the space bar. <gasps> it automatically turned that into a capital letter because they thought you were starting a new sentence because sentences always begin with a capital letter. But if you do another lowercase w and an H and a space bar, it's not gonna capitalize that one. And then you keep going until you run out of room. And then you click on the green box and put a W and an H for each of the green boxes. So once you're all done with your digital worksheet, be sure to turn in your Google slide. And now it's time for your writing lesson. The supplies that you'll need are the printout or writing paper, pencil, eraser, colored pencils, or the digital worksheet. Our objective is I will be able to find the subject and the predicate in a sentence. Today we're going to examine sentences and see if we can figure out who is doing the action and what they're doing. Now before we get started, let's take a look at this chart. A subject is a fancy word for who or what the sentence is about. It answers the question, who or what is doing the action in the sentence? Now the subject is a person, place, thing, or animal. Now let's read the sentence together. The alligator eats cookies and milk. So in this case, the alligator is the subject because the alligator is doing the action. Now let's take a look at this chart. A predicate is a fancy word for what the subject is, has, or does in a sentence. It answers the question, what is the subject doing in the sentence? Now a predicate is that special phrase in the sentence that describes what's happening. Now let's watch this video to learn more about subjects and predicates. Click on the link in your Google Classroom in today's writing assignment. Now listen to this paragraph and see if you could answer the question. Mrs. Ming taught first grade and she had the most beautifully decorated class. She loved the smell of fresh air and letting sunlight in her room. The only problem was her window. When she opened it, it made awfully disturbing noises. What sound did the window make? Can you put it in a complete sentence? So let's say our sentence is, the window went clang. So what do you think the subject is in this sentence? You're right, the window is the subject in the sentence. So let's put a red circle around it. So now, what do you think is the predicate of this sentence? That's correct. Went clang tells you what the window did, so that is the predicate. So let's put a green circle around those words. Now take a look at these sentences. Can you find the subject and the predicates in each of these sentences? Let's do the first one together. The sentence says, I see the bus. Now, as you recall, the subject is a person, place, thing, or animal. What do you think is the subject in this first sentence? Yes, the subject in this sentence is the word I. Now, let's put a red circle around it. Now, what is the predicate? Hmm, remember, it is that special phrase in the sentence that tells you what the subject is, has, or does. That's it. The predicate in the first sentence is see the bus. So let's put a green circle around that. 
Now it's your turn. For your assignment, what I'd like you to do is print out this worksheet and write your full name at the top. Then draw red circles around all the subjects and draw green circles around all the predicates. Then upload this into Google Classroom. Now, if you do not have a printer, you can write these sentences on a piece of writing paper and circle the appropriate words. Have fun! And now let's try this digital worksheet for computer practice. What I'd like you to do is click on the red rectangle and type your name. Like that. And then what you're going to do next is you're going to drag the red circles to the subjects on the sentence. And as you recall, our first sentence subject is I. And now, as you remember, see the bus is the predicate. So what you're going to do is click on the green circle, put it on the circle, the period, and then you're going to drag it. Look closely. You get the arrow going sideways, then pull on it to stretch that circle so that it includes all of the words in your predicate. And then what I'd like you to do is do all the rest of the sentences. And then don't forget to turn in your Google slide. And now it's time for your math lesson. The supplies that you'll need are writing paper with a picture box, pencil, eraser, and colored pencils. Our objective is I can think of ways to earn money. So today we're going to talk about earning money. First, Let's talk about their definitions. What does it mean to earn? Well, earn means to receive payment in return for work. And what is money? Well, that is a way to pay for things like cash or coins. So think about it. What are some ways that we can earn money? Let's watch this video to find out more. What I'd like you to do is click on the link in your Google Classroom in today's math assignment. Now, there are many ways to get money. However, there are two main categories that they fall into, presents or gifts and jobs. You can earn money by receiving gifts from people. Usually when you are celebrating something like a birthday, a holiday, a graduation, or other special occasions. The other way to earn money is from doing a job. Some people do jobs for their family members or neighbors, like helping them do chores, walking a dog, or babysitting. Other types of jobs are those who work in stores, restaurants, schools, hospitals, or other places of employment. So let's think of ways to earn money and put it in a sentence. How about this one? I can earn money by watching cars for others. And now it's your turn. Get out a piece of writing paper and write your full name at the top. Then write a complete sentence telling me one way you can earn money. Then draw a picture to illustrate. And don't forget to color it. Upload this into Google Classroom. And now it's time for your reading lesson. The supplies that you'll need are writing paper, a pencil, and an eraser. Our objective is I can ask questions about forces and motion to learn more. Today we are going to discuss the essential question. We will talk about what makes things move. There are forces in nature that push and pull to make motion. Now motion is what happens when something moves. Now let's watch this video to learn more about forces and motion. You'll click on the link in your Google Classroom in today's reading assignment. Let's take a look at this anchor chart. Here's some of the questions we may have as we think about the topic of forces and motion. What are forces? What is motion? How do forces and motion work? Why do we need forces in motion? When do we use forces in motion? And what happens when we use forces in motion? 
And now for your assignment. What I'd like you to do is think of a question that you may have about forces in motion. And then get out a piece of writing paper and write your full name at the top. Then write your question in a complete sentence. Don't forget to end it with a question mark. Then upload this into Google Classroom. And now, my dear little friends, don't forget your dailies. Be sure to spend at least 20 minutes in iStation, 20 minutes in Happy Numbers, and continue to work on your sight words each and every day. These are great opportunities for you to practice independently and continue to learn and grow. Besides, you get instant feedback on your progress and they're a fun way to learn. Today you did a lot of exciting things. First, you learned about the WH digraph and you were able to recognize them in words. Then you were able to find the subject and predicate in all these different sentences. Then you learned a lot about the different ways to make money through gifts and income. And then you came up with some amazing questions about forces in motion. So you had a super day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.